Namaste, angels. I'm here on September 27th, 999 or 9, to do the reading or an energy reading at least, not the daily, for October 8th, 99 or 9. I think thus far, a message is that some of us, members of the collective, are either very newly embarking upon this journey and have reached that point of indecision as to which path they might follow. And some of us who are further along and in fact, just about to cross the finish line are under energetic attack one way or another. by the dark to sort of derail them off of path because they're so close. Why do I think that? Well, I was shuffling here for a few minutes by myself after praying and I've come many times to this card for one, which is hostilities. And you see there's like a soldier here, battle ready with his sword. You may also notice here, this helmet that he has and the bullhorns coming from it. This has the goddess Isis written all over it. And the sword has her son, Archangel Michael, the sword written all over it. She herself is also the or a sword as the queen of swords, a Gemini. So seeing this, I'm looking right now through my mind's eye, my third eye, at Archangel Michael defending himself As, and others other beings who can't defend themselves like he can against this intrusion from the dark into our lives be mindful of it that it may be coming and then if you see it to recognize it for what it is, something is trying to confuse me and get me off path right now because I am so close to reunion. Or again, alternatively, so this is how this works. <laughs> I've just started on this new journey thing and I've got all this weird stuff happening around me. Um, and for one, one thing being, I thought that I was going to go a particular way and now I find myself being nudged to perhaps go a different way and I'm not sure which one is correct anymore which one is right for me anymore what I want to do what I should do excuse me yeah a little fire going there with um, the Sao Paulo um smells really good though I further think this, because this is not the only card that I came to repeatedly, I also have seen many times in this brief um, few minutes of shuffling, indecision, adjacent possibilities, man holding a heart, and rest and rejuvenation in addition to hostilities. So just be mindful of those um, on the day and throughout the reading that these are messages given in advance. Okay, first let me go over the historical events. In the year 1480 was the great standing on the Ugra, U-G-R-A river, a standoff between forces of Akhmat, A-K-H-M-A-T, Khan, also Khan of the Great Horde, 
and Great Duke Ivan III. So that was three people. Ahmad Khan, Khan of the Great Horde, and the Grand Duke Ivan III of Russia. The event was called Tataro Mongols Retreat. It led to the eventual disintegration of the Horde, H O R D E. In the year, and that was um, 1480, by the way. The year 1856, or 9 11, or 11, was the Second Opium War, or the Second Anglo Chinese War, which begins with the Arrow Incident on Pearl River. The year 1862. Otto von Bismarck becomes Chancellor of the German Empire. 1915 was the Battle of Loos, L-O-O-S, of World War I. Almost 430,000 French, British, and Germans are killed. 1917, Leon Trotsky is named Chairman of the Petrograd Soviet and Bolsheviks gain control. 2001. U.S. President George W. Bush announces the establishment of the Office of Homeland Security. Did you know, on this day in the year 1971, John Lennon releases his mega hit, Imagine, and we'll go over that reading, um, that song for this reading. Famous birthdays, R.L. Stein, who I believe is the author of the Goosebumps series um, that my kids used to read, in any case, um, he will be 70 year, 72 or 9 years old on this date. Johnny Ramone of the Ramones had been born in 1948. He passed away in 2004. Sigourney Weaver, of, who like plays my role um, in my head in Ghostbusters, because when I first started my journey... I fought it, like many of you, to, to speak of embarking on a new journey and being at that, that place, that crossroads of adjacent possibilities and indecision. I can take this path or I can take that path. Uh, Spirit was telling me who I was um, with one of those things being like the master key holder, the earthbound master key holder. And... I just kept seeing like Ghostbusters in my head and, and Sigourney Weaver, like, are you the gatekeeper? <laughs> I am the gatekeeper. And I'm like, I don't want to be the gatekeeper. It just sounds so silly. Um, like a bunch of semantics to me. I was very 3D then. I didn't get it. I've, you know, come a long way in a few months, like the rest of you will do. Like many of you already have. Um, as well, along right alongside with me, All right? We did it together. We will continue to do it together. Um, but that's my Sigourney Weaver story. Matt Damon is 45 years old on this date, or nine. Nick Cannon is 35 years old. And Bruno Mars is 30 years old. Famous weddings. In the year 1824, Salt Lake City founder Brigham Young um, who is also like the founder of um, that religion. Uh, geez, it was right there on the tip of my tongue and I just lost it. I'll come back to it. <laughs> He's 23. I mean, at 20, the age of 23, rather, he wed his first wife, Miriam, or Mary or Mariama. That's how Miriam, um, that's how my name is written in the Quran, actually, in several books, but with an A, like Mariam. Anyway, uh, Miriam Angeline Works was her name. She was 18 or 9. They married in Port Byron, New York. 1842, Princess Sophia weds her cousin, Duke Charles Saxon Weimar Eisenach. So he's got a lot of names that I wasn't prepared for. I didn't realize all those were going to be there. Okay, so Saxon, S-A-K-S-E-N, hyphen Weimar, W-E-I-M-A-R, hyphen Eisenach, E-I-S-E-N-A-C-H. In the year 1846, Prime Minister of Canada, Charles Tupper, 25, weds Frances Amelia Morse. Maybe she was related to the gentleman who created the Morse Code. Um, in any case, she was 20 years old, and they married in Amherst, Nova Scotia. 
1934, South Korean President Syngman Rhee, S-Y-N-G-M-A-N-R-H-E-E, -E, 59, weds Francesca Donner, 34. 1935, Ozzie Nelson marries Holliot Hillard. They starred together in The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. Famous divorces near 2010, musician Ben Harper, 40, div divorces actress Laura Dern, 43, due to irreconcilable differences, of course, after five years of marriage. Famous deaths, John Hancock, 1737, after whom signatures are named, right? Put your John Hancock there, because he wrote his so big. He was born in 1737, he died in 1793. Franklin Pierce, 1804, he was born, or 13, he died in 1869. Clement Attlee had been born in 1883, he died in 1967, and, or 1883, by the way, is 911. and Al Davis, born in 1929, or 111, died in 2011, 11, 11. October in history. I never did this for September, but I felt guided to do it for October. So I'm doing it now. Elvis comes in fifth in a talent show. Elvis Presley made his first known public appearance as a singer on this day. It did not go well. He came fifth in a local talent show, but he was only 10 years old. This happened on October 3rd in the year 1945. The grim history of London's Speaker's Corner. Nowhere in England is the principle of free speech embodied more than the Speaker's Corner in London's Hyde Park. But this right was won th through death and protest. This happened on October 14th in the year 1955. Hurricane on the way? Don't worry. A cozy assurance from a BBC weather forecaster for viewers not to worry about an impending storm has gone down in popular culture as the most spectacular misforecast. This happened on October 15th, which would be uh, 7, 1987 which would be seven. This happened on 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> Guess what the name of the hurricane was? Michael. Yep, Hurricane Michael. He said it was gonna be like nothing. It was something. October 15th, 1987, which equals 7-7. Seven, seven. And lastly, the test of time for the date of creation. The assertion by a 17th century bishop that the universe was created on this day in the year 4004, which would be like archangels and God force, right? Double fours and double zeros in the year uh, 4004 B BC, sorry, was put to the test in a famous trial in the United States on October 23rd, which is one of my children's birthdays, you know, by the way, this is being argued as the date of creation um, October 23rd, the year was 4004 B.C. That they say creation was started. And I'm trying to get back to some of these people to see who they were. R.L. Stein, who will be 72 on this date, um, is in fact an American writer children's book writer. His full name is Robert Lawrence Stein. He's best known for writing hundreds of horror fiction novels like Fear Street, Goosebumps, Rotten School, Mostly Ghostly, and The Nightmare Room. He was born on October 8th, the year 1943. He'll be 72 years old on this date. He's a Libra from Columbus, Ohio. Johnny Ramone, is an American guitarist. He was the lead guitarist in the American punk band, The Ramones, born also on October 8th, but in 1948, a Libra from Long Island, New York, USA. He died on September 15th in the year 2004 at the age of 55 of prostate cancer. 
Sigourney Weaver, who will be 66 years old on this date, is also American. Her full name is Susan Alexandra Weaver, a profession actress known especially for the lead role of Ellen Ripley in the four Alien films and her role as Dana Barrett in the Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. Born on October 8, 1949, she will be 66 years old on this date, a Libra from New York City, New York, USA. Matt Damon, who will be 45 years old on this date, is an American actor who rose to fame following the success of the drama film Good Will Hunting in 1997 from a screenplay he co-wrote with a friend and actor, Ben Affleck. The pair won an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay and the Golden Globe Award for Best Screenplay of their work. Also starred in commercially successful films such as Saving Private Ryan in 1998, the Oceans Trilogy, and the first three films of the Bourne series. Um, that would be Bourne Identity, of course. While also gaining critical acclaim for his performances in dramas such as Syriana in 2005, The Good Shepherd in 2006, and The Departed in 2006. He was, he will be 45 on this date. Nick Cannon will be 35, also an American actor. He's additionally, he's a rapper. Why is he famous? Well, for um, movies like Love Don't Cost a Thing and Roll Bounce. I would say he's probably even more famous for America's Got Talent and having been um, married to Mariah Carey, but that's just me. Neither one of those is listed here. He was born on October 8th in 1980. He's going to be 35 years old. He's a Libra from San Diego, California. And lastly, for the birthdays, Bruno Mars whose real name is Peter Jean Hernandez, is an American singer, famous because he is recognized as a solo artist after leading his vocals, lending his vocals, sorry, to songs Nothing On You by B.O.B. and Billionaire by Travi McCoy, which were world, worldwide successes. Mars has received many awards and nominations for his work as a solo artist, including two Grammy Awards, he was born on October 8th, 1985. He's going to be 30 years old. He's a Libra from Honolulu, Hawaii, USA. And the deaths. John Hancock, born in 1737, is an American statesman, the first person to sign the Declaration of Independence. He was born on January 23rd in the year 1737. He's an Aquarius from Braintree, Massachusetts, USA. He died on October 8th, 1793 at the age of 56, 11. Franklin Pierce is also American. He was the 14th U.S. president, a Democrat, he had been U.S. Senator from New Hampshire, member of the U.S. House of Representatives from New York, I'm sorry, from New Hampshire, um, and their at-large district. His presidential term ran from March 4th, 1853 through March 4th, 1857. He's preceded by Millard Fillmore and succeeded by James Buchanan. Why is he famous? He was the 14th president of the United States from 1853 to 1857, whose inability to calm national tensions over slavery hastened the eventual outbreak of the Civil War. Genial and well-spoken, he was a northern pro-slavery Democrat who saw the abolitionist movement as a fundamental threat to the nation. While he desired to preserve the Union peacefully, his polarizing actions worsened the bleeding Kansas confrontations and set the stage for Southern succession, leaving him widely regarded as one of the worst presidents in U.S. history. He was born on November 23rd in the year 1804-13 under the star sign Sagittarius in Hillsborough, New Hampshire, USA. He died on October 8th, 9, in the year 1869 at age 64. Clement Attlee 
is English. He was a British prime minister. He served as the prime minister of the United Kingdom from 1945 to 1951. And as the leader of the Labour Party from 1935 to 1955, he was born in, on January 3rd in the year 1883. So 1-1-1-1 or 11-11 in the year 9-11. He's a Capricorn from Putney, Surrey, England. He died on October 8th in the year 1967 at the age of 84 of pneumonia. And lastly, Al Davis, who is an American football coach and executive. He is famous because he was the principal owner and general manager of the Oakland Raiders from 1972 to 2011. Under Davis's management, the Raiders became one of the most successful teams in professional sports. Davis was active in civil rights and refused to allow his team to play in any city where black and white players had to stay in separate hotels. He was also the first NFL owner to hire an African-American head coach and a female chief executive. Born on July 4th, 11, in the year 1929, one, one, one. He's a cancer from Brockton, Massachusetts, USA. He died on October um, 8th, 9, in the year 2011, 11, 11, at the age of 82. One cause of death was heart failure. Okay. I'll get to some more shuffling now. Opening now to door to spirit. So this is one of your adjacent possibilities. You can go this way. Hostilities is back. Opening now to the magician and the mirror. If we face ourselves, we might realize the power that we hold within and that we are the magician. And so we can use our abilities to help us decide who means us well and is helping to direct us on the appropriate path and who doesn't. And also which path to take. I mentioned before I had opened to man holding a heart. Here's the man holding a coin. So that may be a direction you want to follow. If you're a divine masculine, uh, you may want to follow the path of the man holding a heart and the man holding uh, a coin. If you are divine feminine, you may want to approach, you know, follow the path that leads to such. Opening now to the seat opposite the magician and the mirror. Again, the magician can tell, you know, who's real, who's fake. Now this is back. Let's go again one more time. Opening now to woman holding a coin. But the seat is back. I'm going to cut. So yeah, I see um, the quote unquote devil trying to mislead, but that's what he does. The devil is a liar and he lies, plain and simple. The man holding a coin is back. The bottom of the deck is seventh chakra, Archangel Uriel. And quote unquote, coincidentally, I'm burning a yellow candle. This is, um, represents Archangel Uriel's aura to me. And also I've mentioned many times that to me, Archangel Uriel is a female. Um, although she, like all of us and any other being, angel, um, and when being can be both, we are androgynous at the soul level. Um, however, she's a female here, like I picture her. So that's pretty cool for me too. This is the overall energy, seventh chakra, Archangel Uriel. 
Okay. The masculine is the angel of strength. Nice. Surrounding him is that indecision card in reverse. I like seeing it in reverse. Not sure I like seeing the fourth chakra, Archangel Raphael, uh, which is the heart chakra in card number 38 in this deck or 11 in reverse though. But we'll see if we can make sense of these three together in a moment. The feminine is also an 11. Maybe we'll have an 11 in the center too and, and go like this. Uh, she is the thinking woman, upright. And the door to personal health, healing and happiness is here in reverse, card number 34. In our subconscious is the angel of balance, upright, like that. And I like having two angels opposite one another. And an angel of three of the four corners. Crowning. The first chakra, Archangel Michael. And this is who the you know author of the deck um, sees as Archangel Michael. But in my eyes, he's been here already. He was that first gentleman on the hostilities card with the bullhorn helmet and the big sword. Um, but first chakra, Archangel Michael. Woman holding a coin is also back. She's at our feet in reverse. And the magician and the mirror is back as well in the center. Very interesting with card 53 and that's an eight. So here we have eight, 11, and here we have eight, 11, both of which are in general, uh, which to me, as many of you may know, represents Saint Germain and Lady Portia and or justice, strength, abundance, infinity, all good things. Okay. You know what? I think I'm going to do, I'm going to go over imagine first and then go over all the cards as once, as a, at once rather, as opposed to perhaps jumping around because I just had the thought that the song Imagine sort of describes what the word says we can expect in the quote unquote new earth or quote unquote new Jerusalem, whatever you call it, new matrix. And that is heaven here on earth, source here on earth with us. and just paradise. That's what the song speaks to. And I think that the purpose of it, why I was guided to do an energy reading for this date, October 8th, um, that quote unquote coincidentally is the date on which John Lennon released the song Imagine and why I was guided to go over the song Imagine, um, you know, both together and separate and apart from this is to remind people of at least one of the choices in paths, those of which are at this point of indecision, to remind them of what's at the end of one. I can't speak to the other, um, well, except to what I believe is on the other side, if we take the other path, but one has been described to me fully, described to us fully, it's written. So I know what to expect if I, if I go that way. So I think it may be a reminder and I'm just feeling like that, like that because I've got so many messages again, before I even started the reading and then to have so many of the same uh, cards show up. And not only so many of the same cards, but angels, archangels show up to help us to navigate um, this energy and these paths and to see our, to see our way, to find our way. I think John Lennon may be one of the angels that was sent to, to help us do that as well. 
So yeah, let me do that first. And here is that song. John Lennon, Imagine. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us. Above us, only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for. And no religion too. Imagine all the people living life in peace. You, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope one day you'll join us and the world will be as one. Imagine no possessions. I wonder if you can. No need for greed or hunger. A brotherhood of man. Imagine all the people sharing all the world. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. Now, those of you who are familiar with the Bible, with the Torah, with the Quran, that's exactly the way the new paradise after the apocalypse, the quote unquote apocalypse um, is described. It's no heaven anymore. Well, well, no heaven because God brings it down here to earth where we are. No hell because he's destroyed that. He's destroyed the devil. Just beings that were meant to live in paradise, meant to, living in paradise. And the rest um, who are of the other choice, the other path, having been expelled from that par paradise. That's exactly the way it's described. No need to kill, no need to die, no religion, just peace and happiness. Okay, so now I'll get to these cards. Okay, I think I'm going to go in the shape of an L. The Angel of Strength, which represents Leo to me. I mean, with this lion here, I can't help but see Leo. Um, but of course, Archangel Gabriel as well as the Archangel whose name means God is my strength. So it's coming with this reminder, this number five of change change in the area of strength it's upright so that the strength is increasing where our power is increasing our freedom is increasing our power over our own lives is increasing and has brought god force behind it that's the change it comes to us through archangel gabriel the messenger he's here to tell us that we're strong enough now the messenger again whose name means god is my strength to tell us that as well that we share that in common. All right. I hate when I lose stuff. I never even got the guy's name back from before. I mean, the Brigham Young. Uh, Mormon. The Mormon religion. He's the one who read the invisible book. And started the Mormon religion. Okay, so I got that back. Maybe I'll get back the rest of what was coming to me about Archangel Gabriel and or this card or Leo, the strength of Leo. Um, indecision in reverse is, again, I like indecision in reverse. This is having overcome um, recent insecurity and a feeling of being unsure as to what to do. We've made a decision. Um... You know, we know what path we're on and on what path we uh, plan are determined to continue. It is a little confusing to me, these two cards together, all this strength, all this um, surety about ourselves, confidence. And then 
the heart center having, you know, being disturbed in, in one way or another, not being completely open, there being some sort of block there. Um, so I would recommend for this to call upon Archangel Raphael, the healing angel, um, to ask for his healing green light. The green um, and pink as well, auras that he shares with Archangel Chamuel, which now this is the second time um, ever for me that Archangel Raphael is here without Chamuel. Very, very interesting um, for me. <laughs> you guys may not think so, um, but they share the, those two auras because Archangel Chamuel is the Archangel of unconditional love and of abundance. So he helps us with financial matters as well. But Archangel Raphael um, being this patron of the, the heart center, the heart chakra, um, and the healing angel in general, like overall, uh, he helps to heal us in matters of love, but also finance, you know, abundance, our lives. So they, they, they work very hand in hand, Raphael and Chamuel as do their auras. So maybe you want to light um, green and or pink candles and call upon these archangels to help you in this area. But it is a little confusing to me that again, with this strength and with this confidence now, there's still a blockage. And this could be something you're holding on to from the past and or a past life. Sometimes we don't realize that we're harboring something uh, from a life about which we don't know much about, that, that we're holding that against um, this person who we otherwise love because we don't remember our past life. That's one of the funky things about this that we need to keep in mind um, in dealing with other people and ask ourselves, why am I taking this approach um, with them? You know, why am I having these feelings about them? Why am I fearful uh, you know, to take action one way or another. But yeah, definitely um, clear any blockages in the fourth chakra is my advice here with this being in reverse. Um, but now, now that I've said all that and gone into his connection to Archangel Raphael being his, <laughs> the he I'm talking about, um, his connection to Chamwell with regard to abundance, it's not surprising that this is that he in reverse is next to a woman holding a coin also in reverse because this card um when it is solely about one's feelings about themselves is feeling lack um again financially and or with regard to yourself like feeling devalued as a human being as a person, like maybe you don't deserve certain things. You, you don't, you know, it's a, it can be self-worth issues. Um, whether that's, t you know, in a tangible way or metaphorically self-worth now. So again, it makes sense that it's next to Archangel Raphael because this is an area that has to be healed one way or another. And so again, I would say to call upon him and Archangel Chamuel, and they both cover love and abundance and would, can help you to resolve this. It can also be, if it's from another person, it can be someone else trying to make you feel devalued. That can be the quote unquote devil that I spoke of before. And I said somebody probably lingering around all of us or, you know, one somebody, several somebodies trying to distract us, trying to knock us off path, um, you know, because they see that this war is just about over. It can be somebody like that, trying to bring you down, trying to make you feel less than, trying to strip you, rob you of your self-respect, self-esteem. Someone trying to demean you. So yeah, it either comes from an outside source or it comes from within and it's you doing it to yourself, like not giving yourself the credit that you deserve, not recognizing, not looking in the mirror and recognizing that you're the magician 
and you're powerful and that that is supported and reconfirmed by the angel of strength here crowning the masculine energy okay we're powerful we're strong enough we have these things but it's not being recognized um by some of us and that's why this heart of the matter is here in reverse like this okay the angel of balance um however thankfully is upright as well and so this is, if nothing else, a comfort, but it's also a reconfirmation that basically, you know, we got this and we have help, we're supported in having this. And it should be very easy to resolve once we put that into perspective and decide to let me sit down, let me meditate for a minute, let me put on, um, you know, let me light a green candle, let me light a pink candle, let me burn some frankincense and myrrh let that smoke rise into the air clear out the bacteria the bacteria and low vibes and negative vibes that are surrounding me or maybe surrounding me in my sphere of energy here let me clear all of this out and find a moment of peace and ask for a moment of clarity from the archangels from god from the universe from source however you want to um, go about doing that. The door to personal healing and happiness in reverse is, I mean, it goes with the rest of this row. These three are all about not realizing one's personal power and authority over their own lives. And further to that, um, an angelic being with other abilities. We all have various um, abilities to varying strengths. Um, like one of my strongest gifts is manifestation, but I have many others. And even I haven't realized the full potential of all of mine, you know, either, you know, so um, I get it. I understand it, but this is like not realizing any of it. You know, this is forgetting who we are, this row here. Forgetting, well, with the, with the exception, I'm sorry, of indecision in reverse. I like indecision in reverse. Just now, just looking at them as three reverse cards and putting them together. So I didn't mean to do that. Indecision in reverse, again, I'm a fan of this one because it means having overcome this previous energy of not being able to decide upon a path. But these two, the magician and the mirror in reverse and the door to personal healing and happiness in reverse. Um, and then this like sort of touching the woman holding a coin in reverse, which is touching Archangel Raphael and the fourth chakra um, in reverse, all say to me like self-worth issues, which is weird when you consider that crowning this door to personal healing and happiness with this person feeling low and or and or stuck right inability to move so again forgetting that they have certain gifts that can propel them and um that they can call on other higher beings of light they can help them to propel themselves because the thinking woman if it's yourself it's coming to a realization some clarities um, about who and or what you are and like finding your inner voice and wisdom. Uh, if it's someone else, let me pick it up. Um, you see that it's a woman here holding a book, right? She's a lady. So perhaps, of you know, esteem, at least social esteem, if not you know, if she's not a, necessarily a wealthy woman, but she's intelligent, learned. She can be someone who is entering your life or has entered your life, a teacher, um, someone well-advised who can provide good advice to you, educate you on certain things, maybe in part being, you know, who and what you are help you to gain some clarity as to, you know, how to proceed. So this is a positive, very positive card. Um, 
whether it's you or someone else in your life. It can also be a new love interest. You know, signifying a new beginning in love. Maybe rebirth with this, the date for which I'm doing this reading, October 9th being 9-9 nine, nine or 9, um, which is born in, in Supreme Math. It's a new beginning. Right? In numerology, 9 is endings. But in Supreme Math, it's the beginning. It's the, the new start. And nothing comes after 9 but 0 in Supreme Math. You know, it's not a 10 the one is, zero comes first, cipher. And once you visit that cipher, that God force, you gain knowledge, one. I mean, I can go through all the numbers, but that's not, that's not what I intended to do when I started that. Uh, my point was that this reading um, is for a nine. So you can either look at it as an ending of something or the start of something new. You can see it as the death or you can see it as the rebirth. But in either case, it leads to a new beginning, particularly when upright. So, so far, these cards are like you... It's like you kind of know what you can do, but you're not taking yourself seriously. It's a little weird, to be honest with you. A little weird. All this energy together. But to get back to it, so if you're feeling this way, however, there's this card here that's underneath the door to personal healing and happiness and, you know, opposite Archangel Raphael and the heart chakra and next to the woman holding a coin in reverse is this balance upright. And this is the angel or, yeah, according to this, the angel of balance. Now, who to me is the angel of balance is Raguel. This would be Raguel. Sort of coming as like the water bearer. It's holding this vessel. Right? She's holding this vessel of water. And it's balanced. It's not teetering. right? She's not at risk of spilling out any of the water. This is very Aquarius. It's particularly for me under the moon. Because I, my moon is in Aquarius. She's here walking in the desert in the sand. Some of us can be, are familiar with how difficult it can be to walk in the sand, um, but she's accomplishing, not only, not only accomplishing it, but accomplishing it without, you know, this water moving. It's, it's still, it's still, but she's got it together. So we can get it together very easily. We just have to remember the heart of our matter here again, that we are the magician. Oh, goodness. Well, you get the picture. I don't know why I can't pick it up. Okay. Uh, let's do... What's left? Archangel Michael. Ooh. Crowning. Let's do that right now. This reading is actually kind of starting to feel kind of financial to me, too. More so than anything else. The financial energy. Because... All right. Archangel Michael. Let's get it. I want you to be able to see the card. Okay, so the first chakra, Archangel Michael, card number 35, 8, has to do with abundance, right? It has to do with infinite abundance. Um, also has to do with strength. So not a mistake that it's next to uh, Archangel Gabriel's card um, and that this Leo card to me, Angel of Strength. The first chakra is the base or root chakra. It's like at the base of our spine, right? So it's sort of what holds us together. It's our root, right? Without it, we'd be slumped over just a pile of, you know, a mound of mush. It's the chakra responsible for our stability, so stability in all areas. Literally, right? Because if we didn't, again, without the spine, you know, we'd just be mush. <laughs> A big mess. Um, so 
literally and figuratively, our stability. So our financial stability as well. Our feeling about ourselves. I talked about feeling insecure, feeling devalued, feel, you know, lack of self-worth, lack of self-confidence that I was reading from this and maybe having to do with finances, with the woman holding a coin in reverse. Um, maybe this woman, this thinking woman upright being one of the people who's going to help you with that. Maybe she's an accountant. You know, maybe she's going to advise you in financial matters. Archangel Michael is here to be called upon to ask him for his leadership. Also his light, his aura. Call on him, ask him for his light to shine on you. So now we're looking for the blue light, blue, purple, right? That's Archangel Michael. And we're looking for that now. And although I have, you know, attribute in general purple to the crown chakra, um, some people see Archangel Michael with purple. You know, so dark, like a really dark blue. He goes anywhere from indigo, you know, to all the way into purple with his aura. Picture that just flowing through us like an eight, infinitely. Because what this card in reverse is signifying is fear. Right? If we're not realizing our stability, if we're feeling instable, if we're feeling insignificant, if we're feeling insecure, that's all about fear. And fear has no place here between strength and intelligence, strength and, you know, helpful guidance. Has no place here with the magician, with this being who we are, has no place here with us having chosen the right path and knowing who surround us, who, who surrounds us, who's here to help us. So we can fix all of this by talking to um, spirit and all this spirit who has come, that has come to the table here today to help us with this. Gabriel, Michael, Raphael, Raguel. Oh, and Uriel. U Uriel was our overall energy. I almost forgot this. Another five, like the angel of strength. More positive change. More positive change. So they're telling us, I mean, this is as simple as, you know, um, Dorothy clicking her heels. Like, you've already got it. You've already got it. You just have to remember that you've already got it. And then this situation is resolved. But it's reminding me of the, in one of the other readings that I did, you know, in this manner, um, whereas there was, I felt some sort of warning about financial issues. And so maybe this is when we begin to feel those feelings about, some, you know, financial worry, but it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. Click your heels, Dorothy, and go home. You're drunk. Now, when I picked this up, look what was underneath it. Hostilities was back. So maybe all these feelings are coming from this person that we're battling, this quote-unquote demon, at least in my mind, right? That Archangel Michael, again, is here to help uh, defend us against. Awesome. Let me get my romance cards now. Okay. Opening these, or taking them out of the box to keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. And now looking again at Archangel Uriel, um, remembering that I may not have gone over or mentioned at all what the seventh chakra is. This is the crown chakra. So when I, whereas I was talking about it with relation to Archangel Michael, um, here we have Uriel, who is also represented by purple, but yellow too. And again, like I said, she's a, a, a five. So this is more positive change. We, we definitely got it. I just opened to heart to heart conversations. Honestly, discuss your feelings with one another. And now that's back. I really think there could be some people just lurking that are t speaking against our unions, um, saying, you know, they're not right for you. 
you know, he's not right for you. She's not right for you. I heard that they did X, Y, Z. I heard they're doing this, that, and the other. Um, I just feel that kind of funky stuff going on and it's bullshit. And with, with to be mindful of the potential for that more five, that's like five of wands, five of swords. In any case, I'm just open to worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. Come on. And now that's back. I'm going to go one more. And I've opened to playfulness. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. So in this spread, we're being a little bit too uptight. And we need to, again, click our heels, go home. Maybe have some wine when we get there. <laughs> chill up. Chill the heck out. Okay, now playfulness is back again. I'm going to cut. Oop. The bottom of the deck is you deserve love. You are lovable. So this speaks to that um, insecurity. It's to help you with your self-confidence. Okay. As a reminder, you deserve love. You are lovable. I don't know why I just held that card over Archangel Michael's card there. Maybe we'll get to see what that may have meant in a second. And I've taken the cards out to... Um, <laughs> And now the overall energy at the bottom of the deck is give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. I was about to say, I just took out the cards. What the heck? And again, to remind you, the other overall energy is seventh chakra, Archangel Uriel. Above the angel of strength is retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world. A top indecision is free yourself. So it sounds like you've done this. You know, those for those to whom the reversal of this card applies, we have indeed freed ourselves already. It's time to take back control of your life. Mission accomplished. And atop Archangel Raphael with the fourth chakra or heart chakra in reverse, very um, appropriately is express your love. Okay, unblock that. Allow the love to flow both ways. That's how it works. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. Okay, we have to flow. That's for our health. That's for our health and happiness. Like that card that's under here, us being unblocked, it's similar to how forgiveness works. You know, you forgive others. It's more for you than it is for them. That same thing goes with expressing your love or any chakra being opened, um, you know, to flow. It's all to help you more so than anybody else. Okay, crown in the feminine and atop the thinking woman is stay optimistic about your love life. This card is back. Positive, positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. Perhaps this is some of the advice that this intelligent woman is giving to you or this intelligent woman is you and you've come to this clarity recently that if I put positive vibes and thoughts into the universe, that's what's going to come back to me because that's how the law of attraction and the law of karma works. A top door to personal healing and happiness in reverse is religious factors. Your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. And thus far in this position, with it being opposite this for yourself, I think that this may be somebody else in your life, um, again, who's trying to control you with religion, you know, with regard to make you feel bad about yourself with regard to your morality or lack thereof in their opinion. And maybe that's where um, 
like I said, this card, the woman holding a coin in reverse could be about somebody else sort of making you feel bad about yourself, making you feel devalued, demeaning you. It could be this person making you feel worthless. Um, you know, you're never going to amount to anything. Uh, this is not the way to go. You know, how are you going to make any money? Um, or you shouldn't be... You shouldn't have freed yourself and left that other relationship and you know to be going off with somebody else now you're a whore um or you're a womanizer you know whichever one applies i think that's what this is at least right now opposite free yourself okay uh atop the angel of balance is attraction you attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully so this is more of what we put out is returned Crowning atop Archangel Michael and the root or base chakra, the first chakra in reverse, is it is safe for you to love. So whereas this card is all about fear, and whereas, again, the first chakra, the reason this card is all about fear is because the first chakra is all about stability um, and security and feeling safe. Here's a reminder, <laughs> um, you know, to join along with that. It is safe for you to love. Open your heart, so take Archangel Raphael's advice too, to give and receive the highest energy of all. A top woman holding a coin in reverse, where I said you could be feeling demeaned, you could be feeling low, you could be feeling devalued, is love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. Everything that we discussed is showing up here in the cards. And atop the magician in the mirror, in reverse, where we're reminded who and what we are and what this is all about, the heart of the matter, which appropriately is diagonal to the heart chakra, our heart of the matter, is soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. So, whereas someone may be of the opinion that you shouldn't have freed yourself the matter at hand is you had to because this is your soulmate so don't let them talk you out of your love life stay optimistic about it it is safe for you to love let go of the fear i understand someone else you know sort of put it upon you placed it upon you remember who you are remember there's a magician under here and you can easily turn him upright speaking of dorothy and her shoes I said a couple weeks ago, joking to somebody, that I was Glenda the Good Witch of the East, here to help people, remind them, you know, of their own power and to click their heels whenever necessary. Ever since, <laughs> this is the really weird part, as if that wasn't weird enough that I did that and had that conversation with someone, but this is the really weird part. Ever since my phone, the Google, not just my phone, but Google, where it has taken my information and used it, right, saved it, that data mining, my phone says that I'm in Kansas. It gives me the date and time and all this stuff, um, the weather for Kansas. I have no idea for the life of me how to change it to New York. I've turned my location off and turned it back on to hopefully like reboot this thing. Nope, I'm in Kansas, according to Google. Um, which has nothing to do with this reading, but it just came to mind. <laughs> okay, sorry, let me get back on track. Yes, so you're, doing, you're on the right path. You're doing good. You're doing the right thing. Remember who you are. Remember what you are. And if you ever start to slip into that place where you're becoming forgetful of it. Remember that you're surrounded by the angels and you can call on them. Okay. Don't give in to these hostilities or hostile people. All right. Let me get some advice from Tony Carmine Salerno, taking the cards out of the box to blessings right away. Opening to expectancy right away, which is always interesting, but I've been talking a lot about rebirth here and born nine being born. Um, but blessings. So seeing mother Mary 
and expectancy, you know, together right away. I think about, of course, her child, the divine son, the divine S-O-N and the divine S-U-N. She's back. Now meditation, which I said we need it. Those of us who are feeling less than, she's back with the blessings though. And now with miracles as well. She's back with the blessings. I'm gonna cut. Let me thank her tremendously with all we have. Dear mother of all angels. Now at the bottom of the deck is healing sounds. Maybe we can listen for more messages from mother and any other high beings of light that want to speak with us, help to guide us. The bottom of the deck is moon tree. This is the overall energy. And this card is all about sacred union in a marriage of sorts, the marriage of heaven and earth, um, similar to what John Lennon speaks of in the song Imagine or what the Bible, what the Torah speaks of when they say that one day mother and father are going to be right here with us. And Jesus, the Christ, Horus the Avenger will be sitting in his throne and we can all have access to him that way, just directly living in paradise with him, among him. Just like Queen Nzinga, she lived and battled among her people well into her 60s. She was a queen, but she was humble, right? And this is what we remember about that soul, Jesus the Christ. He's the king. He was humble. He was among us. He will be again among us. That is the promise from the truth tellers. Okay, so we're going to ignore this. This reading is all about ignoring the liar, disregarding what the liar has to say to us or about us, and focusing on this, this marriage of heaven and earth within us and around us. Okay and our own individual sacred unions. Mother Mary is back with reflection as advice to the masculine. And to the feminine, more moon tree sort of advice, more, more heaven on earth, earth connection advice about being grounded. You know what, I want advice from Dice too. I haven't done this in a while, advice from Dice. Romantic dinner. Maybe we can have the heart to heart conversations over dinner, some of them at least. It's 50 50, so perhaps something that we were thinking of. It can go either way, and it's not a big deal. Which way? Have a cocktail. That wine I might have mentioned, maybe. Chill out. All right, let's read from the book, um, Tony Carmine Salerno's. Feelings on these two parts. Earth connection. Take refuge in Mother Earth. Spend time in nature. Feel her healing energy. Allow her to nurture and heal your body, supporting you. Feel the deep pounding of her heart. Your concerns soon dissolve and you gain a clearer perspective on your life. Let your heart and mind be filled with the unconditional love that surrounds you. Let it flow to every part of you that is in need of healing as you are nourished by her wise and loving heart. You know what? Let me try to remember to do moon tree too. Let me do it right now. This was the overall energy from this deck. 
an old idea resurfaces. Conditions are now right. The moon is in alignment with your heavenly star. Nurture this idea. With love and positive energy, you will achieve positive results. The mysterious image on this card shows a majestic oak tree rooted in fertile soil. It has grown strong and tall. Its branches reaching out to the sky nourished by the light of a spiritual moon. This card also represents a marriage of some kind, the marriage of heaven and earth, the physical and the spiritual, or a sacred union through which something new is born. And what I say today was in Supreme Math, born. Also, I found it interesting that this, the word rooted is used here. And we just talked about the root or base chakra and that being the um, crowning card of this reading. Archangel Michael with the first chakra, the root chakra. What else was um, interesting about this? Both of these cards speak to grounding ourselves in earth energy and getting out into nature and nurturing ourselves back to the optimum health. Maybe we can do our, our meditation out there, okay? And whatever makes you feel most comfortable, whatever area of nature is most relaxing uh, to you. Lastly, reflection. It is time to reflect on what you have accomplished to date. Remember what you were like five years ago, 10 years ago. Look back and you'll realize just how far you've come. Acknowledge the experiences that have helped you get where you are. Hopefully you will see that even painful or unpleasant events served as a purpose. Everything turns golden with the passing of time. Like autumn leaves that fall to the ground. So again, the ground is being mentioned filling the tapestry of our lives with beautiful colors. Also, autumn and the ground reminds me together of Virgo, the energy of Virgo, maybe Archangel Sandalfond hovering over this reading, bringing us his unity from the angel tarot or the energy of the hierophant from the traditional tarot. And more marriage. I hope that you guys enjoyed this reading. I'll be back with a daily, God willing, on this date as well. Namaste, angels.